faces a difficult motor market and increasing geopolitical risks. Insurers operating in the Turkish market face a turbulent environment, according to a new report by AM Best. I'm Yvette Essen for AM Best TV and I'm joined by Will Keen Tomlinson, financial analyst for AM Best, to talk through this new report. So can we talk through some of the key trends and characteristics facing insurers working in the market? Historically, the Turkish insurance market has been a very high growth market. Um, premiums have almost doubled since 2014, and it's also been very profitable. Um, this has attracted European insurers such as Allianz and AXA to invest a lot of capital in the market. Recently, due to the pressure that the Turkish economy is under, these returns have been much lower in euro terms and uh, inflation adjusted, and so the market's becoming much more of a challenge. Additionally, the motor third party liability insurance market has put the profitability of non life insurers under pressure. So, you mentioned motor there, which is obviously very important for this Turkish sector. It accounts for a very large amount of non life premium. Can you tell me about some of the trends there and the challenges that insurers face in that sector? The main risks facing motor insurers. Um, are those attached to the third-party liability insurance, which makes up around two-thirds of total motor premiums in the market. There have been regulatory changes in recent years which have put profitability under pressure, including a change to the scope and extent of bodily injury claims, a change in the minimum wage, which both led to reserve strengthening, and then in 2017, controls were put in place to cap premium increases, and also to pull some motor insurance premiums. This means insurers have lost pricing control while facing continuing increases in claims costs. So overall we see a um, technical loss on the market. Currently this can be recouped through investment income with the high investment yields available on government bonds and deposits. However, we see the market being under threat if these are no longer available. Another key characteristic of the Turkish market is the potential impact of a major large NAT cat loss. Can you explain to me how insurers are working in the market to respond to this potential threat? Mm -hmm. um, so the major catastrophe risk in Turkey is an earthquake um, and this would be most significant in populated urban areas such as Istanbul. We consider retail books to be relatively well protected, firstly through policy exclusions in third party liability insurance, and secondly through household being protected via a government scheme called the Turkish Catastrophe Insurance Pool. The commercial books of insurers are where the real risk would lie, with much larger exposures. However, we think that the companies should be protected by their excess of loss reinsurance programs, and their fate will largely depend on how much risk they choose to retain and the effectiveness and structure of these programs. Finally, can you tell me about some of the challenges that we expect insurers in the market to face going forward? With motor third party liability insurance, without significant rate liberalisation, then we don't see the market moving back to an underwriting profit in the short to medium term. The risk to this line of business is if interest rates fall without a corresponding drop in inflation, then the market may move from an underwriting loss to an overall profitability loss. Um, the other major risk faced in Turkey at the moment is mounting geopolitical tension, especially with the United States. If sanctions were to be put in place against Turkey, we'd see this as a significant economic risk. And if European countries were to follow suit, this could cause significant operational problems for the European capital invested in the market. A copy of AM Best Report looking at the Turkish market can be found on ambest.com. For AM Best TV, I'm Yvette Essen.